Well, week 10, huh? Crazy day, huh? Right? <laughs> you know, we thought we would have, you know, a, a game of the century type feel, you know, around here, but that didn't happen, didn't, did it today? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about everything. We'll talk about everything in the top 25, because top 25 is going to get shaken up once again. I do know one team that's going to get on up in there, and their name is the Washington Huskies. Now, the Huskies, they were pretty much behind most of this game against Oregon State on Friday night. I did not watch this game on Friday night. For whatever reason, I didn't think this game was as important. Um, I think I ended up just falling asleep on Friday night after work. So I was like, I'm, I'm out. I'm asleep. And this game here ended with Michael Penix leading the Huskies on a 92-yard drive. To get the game-winning field goal, and again the Beebs, the Beebs were tough. Again, this is a tough game to go up against. It's a tough team to go up against. But ultimately, you know, like working stages, like I, I was unsure how they were leading the majority of this game. Just watched it out, gained them, watched it, you know, was doing everything else in the yards department of I guess they. Again, I guess Oregon State's defense was just that good, and that's been the story for them all season long. Their defense has been that good, and they kept Washington at bay until that very last drive. And good on Washington. They stay alive in the Pac-12 race. Oregon State looks like they're done in the Pac-12 race. Three losses total. You know, not. it's not going to... It's. It's not your time yet, Beebs. It's not your time yet. So, it is unfortunate. Then we get to Saturday. And boy, oh boy. What a day. Not much happened early on, though. Not much happened early. Um, we save all that for later. But we got, we got a taste of what was to come. As Texas Tech TCU started us off with the big noon game. You know, Texas Tech, their defense played pretty solid for about three quarters. Unfortunately, Tyler Shug got, you know, put in as um, Barrow Morton, you know, got knocked out of the game. And he ended up coming in. Shug ended up coming in in the fourth, like late third, early fourth. That was pretty much it for Texas Tech as their offense, you know, I know people are going to cry about the penalties, but in reality, Texas Tech should have shown up in that fourth quarter because eventually TC was going to do something. TC was going to do more than something, you think. I mean, you have Darius Davis, you know, getting a receiving touchdown and a kick return touchdown. You know something's wrong. And when you have Kendra Miller just running all over, Texas Tech defense, you know something's up. And that offense just kind of sputtered for Texas Tech. And TCU was able to take advantage when the time was right. And TCU stays undefeated. Like, what can you say? It went by its end. Stay undefeated. It is what it is. Ohio State Northwestern in some bad, bad weather. You know, C.J. Stroud didn't even show up. The rest of Ohio State's offense didn't even show up. The only guy that did was probably Mayan Williams. Defense, you know, was letting Northwestern do Wildcats and run the ball like 50, 60 times in this game. Even though Northwestern is absolutely terrible, this should not have come to this point. Again, Ohio State wins by 14. They win 21-7, but should not have came to this point at all. And I really, I thought Ohio State was going to lose this game, but Northwestern decides to be Northwestern, to be, you know, the terrible team that they are this year. Just, why? But Ohio State, uh, that was not, that was not pretty football at all. I get it. <laughs> it was the elements, it was the elements, they say. No, it was just terrible football all around should have blown this team up by 50. It's disappointing. You also have North Carolina, Virginia. Now, Drake May had another three touchdowns. 
to passing, one on the ground, but the real hero of this story was Josh Downs. This man had 15 catches, 166 yards, touchdown. And despite the fact that Virginia, you know, they had, you know, their best effort in this game, Virginia was keeping up with North Carolina throughout this game. North Carolina still won in the end, and they're still perfect in the ACC. Still perfect. That's good. That's good. Um, their only loss is to a team we'll talk about, who I believe you all know who I'm talking about. You know, that's not the ACC, but plays a lot of ACC teams. But we'll talk about that team in a moment. And then Tulane Tulsa to round out the noon slate as Ty J Spears, Ashok Clayton Johnson. I mean, those two men were a wrecking crew all on their own over 200 yards rushing between them 250 two, over 250 rushing yards between them in fact the green wave they keep on rolling they move past the golden hurricane pretty easily you know michael pratt also threw a couple touchdowns in there as well but too late the run game the defense on point yet again they're still undefeated in american conference play setting up something big for the next week, but we'll talk about Tulane more next week. We'll talk about them a little bit more, you know. We'll, and I'll finally get to see Tulane play a full game next week. So, you know, I'm gonna be watching you, Green Wave. I'm gonna be watching you. As again, I, I said, the American is gonna be gonna be very important to watch, you know, as the month of November comes up. And then in the afternoon, oh boy, it was supposed to be the big one. Tennessee and Georgia and unfortunately for Hidden Hooker and the Vols they just got slapped around for 60 minutes man that was just, that was absolutely disappointing Hidden Hooker didn't even throw a touchdown he was harassed by the Georgia defense all day long there was just nothing Tennessee could do and as soon as Stetson Bennett you know threw those two touchdowns you know as soon as you know he ran for one as well I said it was 24 to 6 at half. It was over. I knew it. I knew it was over. And I knew that Georgia, again, who really should have been number one after all, they 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 beat Tennessee like it was nobody's business. Like this was an old school Alabama beating. Like, you know, one of those rough shot Alabama beatings. Like Tennessee, ugh, this this is not the high powered offense. In fact, they look they look like a 1960s car battery out here because they look that bad. This was rough. Now Tennessee trails Georgia in the SEC East, which is a good sign with just a few weeks left to go in the season. Not a good sign right there. You also got Oregon, Colorado. Guess who's still perfect in the Pac-12? Bo Nix and the Ducks, you know. Bo Nix clearly saw what Christian McCaffrey was doing, though. He had two rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns, and a receiving touchdown in this game. This man has been playing lights out this entire season, aside from the Georgia game. This man has been playing absolutely incredible. I, I Yeah, I get it. It's against, you know, the Pac-12 bottom feeders at this point. Because now Oregon's schedule gets a lot tougher. You know, Washington, Utah, and Oregon State to end the year. Oh boy. You know, this one's gonna be this is gonna be real interesting. Sure they had UCLA in there, but for the most part, the Pac 12's been pretty easy. Pickings for Oregon. And now and now and now Oregon's toughest stretch is here. Can, can they keep it up? We'll find out. Also, Penn State, Indiana, Drew Aller finally came in. That's the guy that's been, you know, circulating for Penn State guys. You know, the Penn State fans but been wanting, clamoring for Drew Aller. And he finally came in for Sean Clifford. Um, decision by James Franklin to put him in. He threw t- touchdowns. But there's also Katron Allen. He had three more touchdowns. And then... You know, it was just too much for Indiana. Just too much. I mean, Indiana was already a pretty bad team, but they just got overwhelmed by all these touchdowns Penn State was putting up. And that was it. 
easy peasy lemon squeezy for the Nittany Lions. And also the uh, another game I had you know circled again. This was a game that keep that was going to be about the Big 12 race. You knew it was going to be about the Big 12 race, and that was Oklahoma State Kansas. Unfortunately, Spencer Sanders didn't get the go. No Jalen Daniels either. He didn't go either. But it's okay. It's okay. Because it was the Jason Bean show. Three touchdowns for him. And then you also had another man by the name of Devin Neal just running all over the Cowboys. Running all over them like it was nobody's business. The guy that started for Oklahoma State, Garrett Wrangle, he unfortunately did not do very well. He had three interceptions in this game, and none of them, none of them, none of them went too well because Kansas cashed in on all three of those picks, and Kansas, you know, is bowl eligible. I know. Crazy world we live in, in which Kansas for the first time in quite some time, is bowl eligible. And Oklahoma State, you know, after all that momentum to start the season, they just have fallen completely flat on their face, losing two straight, you know, like this, you know. Actually, they've lost three straight, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. But we're talking losing two straight to the state of Kansas, to the whole state of Kansas. And just... Bad performances, you know, the past couple weeks by Oklahoma State. Just not a not a good look right there. Then you also had Michigan State Illinois, in which you know I, I could excuse the first half it was nine to seven and a half, but Illinois decided to have a terrible third quarter, in which you know there was a punt that almost looked like a butt punt, and it it, it did go. Illinois way at all and Mel Tucker he did it again I, I don't know how this man continues to do it because you know not only were there multiple Michigan State guys suspended for their actions against Michigan in that tunnel altercation last week they almost choked this game away because I mean how many times did Michigan State you know try to give it the Illinois the game not Indiana Illinois Illinois the game too many times late in this game like Michigan State all they needed to do was like kick a field goal you know tr or you know try and run the clock out instead they give Illinois way too much time and that almost backfired on them that almost backfired on Michigan State so like Illinois not only did you lose today you, you, you messed things up for yourselves in the Big Ten West you messed things up for yourselves and now you gotta play to win the game next week against Purdue in a big one to oh, to do something about the Big Ten West because the Big Ten West is a log jam at this point in which nobody knows what's going to happen in that division. It's not clear cut because everybody has at least two losses. Most teams have three, and now Illinois. Like this is this is not gonna like this is just not looking too good, not looking too good at all. So something's gotta give. You know, speaking of something that's gotta give, I I I don't know why we believed in Syracuse. We shouldn't have. This yeah, I get it. I get it. Players were out for both sides. Like Abani Kanda was out. You know, um, Garrett Trader was out. You know, so Syracuse had to use a backup. And, I mean, Pitt had a two-yard punt in this game. That's how insane this game was in the worst possible way. I don't understand it. Like, Syracuse only had nine points. You know, this defense for Pitt, they had been the greatest, and yet they limited Syracuse to nine points. The the guy again for Pitt that starred that was really the star of the show was Rodney Hammond with his 120 yards of the ground and Pitt they somehow get they somehow get this win Syracuse you know again disappointment after disappointment after disappointment last three weeks 
three straight losses. Gotta be disappointing again. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this just doesn't make any sense for Syracuse at this point. At least they're bowl eligible, right? That's good, right? You know. And then UCF Memphis. Oh boy, another one of those wars between UCF and Memphis. Oh right, we thought you thought we forgot. Hey, UCF and Memphis used to be really something dangerous. But ultimately, despite Memphis's best efforts in this game, it, it, it was a game in which Mikey Keene and R.J. Harvey were the real deal. Both those guys showed out and did enough for the Knights to keep on rolling in the American with just one conference loss. And guess what that sets up? That sets up UCF going up to Tulane. You know, up to the Big Easy in New Orleans next Saturday. And it's going to be a big one again. The American is going to be very, very key in deciding probably who's going to be that New Year's Six bid. A lot of people still are saying Cincinnati, but right, we're focusing on the right now. And UCF Cincinnati, not UCF Cincinnati, the game already been played. Talk about UCF Tulane. UCF Tulane, but Cincinnati is lurking. So we'll see what the American can do. We'll also see, again, what the Sun Belt can conjure up. But who knows if the committee is even going to write some Sun Belt teams right now. And then in the evening, uh, Utah run game. Again, defense again. You know, too much for Arizona. Utah wins comfortably, 45-20. Cam Rising did enough. Didn't need to do too much. So it is what it is. But then you had, oh boy, Texas, Kansas State. Oh boy, oh boy, why? This Texas team bends. They bent, but they didn't break. And that was the key. Again, the offense in the second half has been atrocious for several games now. And they did this again, you know, for the long courts. They did this again, in which they only scored three points in the second half. But I guess three points was enough. It was despite the fact that, you know, Deuce Bond and Adrian Martinez, yes, Adrian Martinez got the start for Kansas State, you know, despite the fact that they were, you know, running and passing all over the long courts defense. Law courts were able to make those plays late, and especially the fumbles that they couldn't recover until they got the very last one at the very end. Texas got the very last fumble recovery at the end, and there was so many fumbles in this game that Texas didn't recover. Some they lost on their own, most of which were lost by Kansas State, but again, one fumble needed to go kick the way of Texas and it did Texas survives setting up something huge for them next week down in Austin with TCU bitter ending for Kansas State now it's a cluster of two lost teams in the Big 12 a cluster of teams with two conference losses we don't know what's gonna happen again the final few weeks of the season are going to be insane let me tell you and then another big one, a top 10 matchup, Alabama, LSU, and this game, you know, this, this, this right here was a, was a game that could tell, that you could tell something's not right here. Alabama, they haven't looked like the team they used to be, you know, they haven't looked like the team that's had that dog in them, that fight, that bark, that bite. They haven't had that type of spark in them. And Bryce Young and company just could not get any rhythm going against this LSU defense for majority of this game. Yeah, Bryce Young had a couple, you know, big drives in this game. But for the most part, none of that was happening. We're talking overthrows. We're talking Bamba couldn't get deep down in the trenches. And again, I, I said in the preview. Somebody had to win this game in the trenches. Somebody had to win this game with their defense. Somebody's defense was going to bend and break. And that ended up being Alabama's. 
this Brian Kelly said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, we we not doing all this." And Jay Daniels is like, "I, right, I got this." And Jay Daniels decides to be the hero and saves LSU's season. Because again, people were doubting LSU. You know, again, like again, nobody thought that this should be the number number ten team in the country, but they are, and they're going to be a little bit higher because not only did Brian Kelly, you know. Think smart, you know, by going for it in the OT, you know, for the win in overtime. But he trusted Jay Daniels to get that win for him in overtime, and they got it. And now, not only is Alabama with two losses before the Iron Bowl, by the way, two losses before the Iron Bowl, not only is Alabama pretty much out of the college football playoff race, guess who's also out? The next team we're talking about. Oh boy, I told y'all. I told y'all about this Notre Dame defense. I told y'all. Elite defense. Absolutely unreal defense. And they did it. They did it against Clemson. They destroyed the Clemson Tigers. This game for Notre Dame was on another level. Like, again. Pick six in this game. Blocked punt for a touchdown in this game. On the offensive side, the run game, bullying, straight up domination. You know, the backs had over 200 yards by themselves. Drew Pine, he didn't even need to do too much. He didn't even throw for 100 yards, and he still got a couple touchdowns, you know, in this game. And for Dabo Swinney, uh, this this was bad. DJ Uyla is not that guy. You know, Club Nick. Probably isn't that guy either. But, I mean, Clemson, this this was bad. This was real bad. You know, you were down 28 to nothing before the garbage points started to come in. You know, it, at least it wasn't as garbage as some of these calls in the Alabama LSU game, in which, you know, a fumble that was clearly a fumble did not get called a fumble. I, yeah, it's the rule, but I don't care. I don't care if it was the rule. It was a fumble, and then you know the other, the the other play in which you know it was a tipped pass. That was not called a tipped pass. It was you know called pass interference on LSU instead. But you're not you're not you're not the Tigers of LSU, Clemson. You're the Tigers of Clemson, and you got steamrolled. Again, I kind of expected this to happen. I expected this to happen. Like, again, I just did not see the answer for Clemson to win this game. And all I said for Notre Dame to do was do just enough. And what did they do? Just enough on offense. Again, Pine didn't even have 100 yards passing. That's how you know they did just enough. Like, oh my goodness, man. This is good stuff right here. You know, a lot of people were saying, oh, well, Clemson doesn't belong, you know, yada, yada, yada. And they and they really don't because, again, this Clemson team should have lost multiple games by now. But, you know, it is what it is. So, Clemson not in the driver's seat anymore for a college football playoff berth at the moment. That's right. I said at the moment. There's still time. We they still have time. Four weeks until the reveal of who's going. It's not done yet. We, we, we still got a whole 28 days or so left of the season. We still, got a, we still got a full four weeks. It's not done yet. Michigan Rutgers was a game that was a thing. You know, J.J. McCarthy had three touchdowns in the second half. Michigan also put up 38 points in the second half. Took the ball away from Rutgers three times in the second half. And this was them being down 17 to 14. I mean, Rutgers had blocked the punt, you know, for a touchdown as well. But Michigan prevailed pretty easily in the second half. That's just that's just how you do it. Like Blake Corb was a non factor for most of this game. He still had hundred yards, mostly a non factor though. In Michigan, they set themselves up pretty nicely 
to be in the top four. There was another ranked matchup, but it wasn't as important to me, and that was that Wake Forest NC State game in which MJ Morris, uh, which I continue to forget, I, I thought Jack Chambers was still the starter for some reason, but MJ Morris, he is him. He is that guy. And he did it again. Three more touchdowns for him. Not only that, despite the Sam Hartman AT Perry connection working for the Deeks. Uh, that Wolfpack defense was not so kind. They picked off Hartman three times. And NC State was able to get the W. And that is how you do it. That is how you do it right there. Not only did NC State pretty much eliminate Wake Forest from any sort of ACC contention. They, 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 this, this was, this was not how you wanted to go out Wake Forest, you know. You know, NC State kind of in that same boat in which, you know, they're not going to go to the ACC championship either. It doesn't. It looks like Clemson has pretty much locked up the ACC regardless. You know, at least on the Atlantic side anyway. So it looks like it's going to be Clemson and North Carolina. I feel like that's, pretty, that's a pretty safe bet unless North Carolina collapses. But I don't think Clemson's going to collapse in these last two games in the ACC for them, you know, so it is what it is there, yeah, it, I mean, there's just nothing I can digest more from this one, and then those Pac-12 out the gay, uh, Pac-12 out the dark, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's because it's going to be 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 a.m. on the East Coast, you know, that's why, that's why I feel so tired, because these Pac-12 after dark games give me, they give me something. They give me something to talk about late at night, and I mean, UCLA, Arizona State, no Zach Charbonnet, but it's alright. DTR was like, I right, I'll do it myself. Four TDs. Rest of the backs in the backfield were also eaten. They had three touchdowns, three guys had, three tu had a touchdown apiece for three touchdowns. Yeah, Zazabi and Valade and Ed Borgett, you know, they were all right in this game. They did what they needed to do to try to keep the Sun Devils in it. But ultimately, UCLA, too much. Same thing goes for Cal USC. I mean, Jack Plummer, he was on point for this game. But again, too much Caleb Williams. Too much Michael Jackson in this game. Too much of the Trojans offense. USC... And UCLA take care of business against Pac-12 bottom feeders. And they are still on a collision course. Those two teams are still on a collision course for a couple weeks from now. So Pac-12 ain't going anywhere today. They're still in the thick of things for the college football playoff. Now, I do have something planned uh, to wrap this up. We'll be talking about it on Wednesday uh, a little a little um, CFP talk, if you will. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll discuss all that, you know, on Wednesday. And I'll try to see, you know, what in the world's going to happen. Because, you know, there, there, there's some things that need to be worked out before I can do this real quick. But, you know, it's going to be some, it's going to be a collab. We're going to do one of those collabs. I've been clamoring to do one of those for quite some time now. We're going to do one. So, there's that. But, honestly, there's a question, you know, that's lingering in the back of my mind that has not been answered in, since the inception of the college football playoff. Will there be a two-loss team in the CFP? And the answer, to me, is that I think there will be. I think there will be. I think there will be enough chaos for a two-loss team this year. It's one of the things that has not been answered. We've seen one loss, non-champions. We've seen a group of five team, but we haven't seen the third option, which is a two-loss team. We have not seen that yet in the four-team iteration, and I want to see it. LSU is one of those teams that can get there. There's other two-loss teams as well that can get there, but we'll find out the rest of the way. We still got four weeks left. Cannot wait for next week, man. Cannot wait. 
What about y'all? Because I don't know about y'all. That high scoring Houston SMU game, you know, the FBS record and everything. Yeah. That was wild. And so was this week, as, you know, how many teams lost again in the top 25? One, two, three, four, you know, five, six, seven, you know, eight, and then nine. Yeah, nine top 25 teams lost this year. Or rather, this week, not this year. This week, that would be that would be wild if only nine top twenty-five teams lost in a year. But that's not how that works. Another another top twenty-five shakeup. I bet you. I bet you we're gonna see some new teams in the top twenty-five and everything like that. And until you know next week for college football coverage anyway. Big Boy Sports is signing out, and I'll see you all in the morning to discuss some other stuff because we got some other things to discuss so I'll get some shut eye and I'll be back in the morning to talk some stuff you'll find out what stuff it is in the morning take care everybody and have a good night <laughs>